it's kind of relaxing. So we're gonna be using KTT roses, first of all, for today's build, because, you know. All right, and then Salvin sent us some keycaps. I'm not gonna look at all of them, but I do wanna show you guys a few of them. He sent me some of like these burnt copper ones. They're actually really cool, but he put my logo on it. Now I kind of low-key want to run a, run some of these keycaps with them. I thought this was super neat. I don't know, I like the color, the tones of this. This would look actually really cool on a lot of different boards. A little bit of blue. And then he sent me this one. Zepsity sent over this. This will be in group by, I believe. And uh, this is about 30 bucks for this little aluminum tray here, which honestly, pretty nice quality. Some different colors too. Pretty low profile, which I kind of like. Okay, this one here is pretty sick. It's a Damascus one. So nice. I thought this one here was pretty nice. This one here is pretty sick. All right. I think he's, I think Salvin's selling these too. This I have to use on something. I have to use this on something. Also, Salvin sent me, I believe this is a Salvation, but he sent me in like one of the new colors, I believe, Copper Slag. We might build this and we might give this away, but it depends on a few things. Ooh, wait. What is this? Wait, this is kind of fucking sick. He did show me a photo of this, but I'll be honest, the photo he sent did not do it justice. This is like, this has texture to it. Yeah, you can see it like as I'm, I'm kind of like going through the light here. I'm not, I don't know what this is. Should we just open it? This is a different keyboard entirely. Hope you're feeling better. I am. Thank you guys for asking. What is crushed? Oh, it's the color of the keyboard. Oh, is this the... Um... Wait, what board is this? This is a really nice color. God damn, now I don't remember what board this is. I think this is one of the in, yeah, this is a nice color actually. I don't know if this is Cerakote or not. I like the texture of the Anno on this. Okay, I need to ask him what board this was again. I'm not gonna lie, I don't remember. But I already opened up the board a lot because I was taking pictures of it. Okay, this keyboard is actually pretty neat. Isn't it neat looking? I would say there's a few key things I want to point out about this. Um, I like the inner weight. Does, it doesn't go through the back, which is a design choice. It does have this like big, um, beefy kind of tight face here on the bottom. So you can either love it or hate it. I do find that's a common trend throughout the board. So you guys can see on the front. Um, some interesting notes. Besides the unique aesthetic of the, uh, the frame itself, this material, I'm assuming this is acrylic of some sort, is almost like a soft, soft touch finish. And it's so unique. The anno on it, or with the eco, I guess this is an e-coat because it's beige, flawless. Um, there is like, if you guys are seeing specs in this, I need to peel this thing off, that's why. Daughter board is not universal, at least I don't think so, uh, so. It is what it is there, but pretty unique little board. I believe you can either do two switches or two knobs. I'm probably gonna go with knobs today, cause why not? But pretty unique looking keyboard. Like, I'm kind of into it. Another small note is the front height, I believe is 22 and a half millimeters. So it's a little higher than I would say a lot of people usually enjoy, but there's nothing wrong with that 20 to 23 mark. Yeah, it's, it's a pretty neat design, like interesting design choice everywhere. I think it's neat. I think what really kind of like draws me to this board is also this kind of shell of an acrylic finish here too. I don't know, it, it makes the board almost look 
3D in a way. Like, look at that. Isn't that kind of neat? It's, it's kind of cool, right? And then we have our PCB. Now, I am not disappointed with this at all. I was a little worried because I had never really seen any work from this company before. And I was a little worried that this was gonna be riddled with meme cuts and flex cuts. And you know, I'm like, ah, oh, this might be a foamy board, but I'm happy to say that this has no more, no more cuts than the unicorn does. I, I am okay with just this. This is like, to me, if you did want to include flex cuts on a, on a keyboard, on a PCB, this is probably what the ideal amount of flex cuts usually would look like. That way there, the alpha separate, the alpha are all separated from everything else. And it makes a little bit more sense. Now, I don't know why I'm going to be critical with this. I don't know why these little like things are here kind of connecting the two, but it still kind of does its job. Yeah, at least it's not on every row. I can give it kudos for that. And again, it does have either the two switches we can put over here or the knobs. Also, I don't know what this is supposed to be here on the PCB, but it's kind of neat looking too. I respect it. Weird flex, but <laughs> what's up Wilma? Interesting PCB from Mech 11 actually. Um, this has been a common trend that I've been seeing on PCBs, which I've been really liking by the way. So if you guys don't know, these are spare diodes because sometimes in shipping, it happens, a diode will fall off. Joining in after a long time missed oh, you, God. good sir. Dude, thank you so much for the four months. So pretty neat little thing here. I've been seeing, like I said, I've been seeing a few people do this now to their PCBs. I like that. That's kind of neat. Having the spare diodes just here so I don't have to like, you know, request another one or it's, it's nice to have, believe it or not, it's, a, it's not a super common thing, but it happens more than you think. We got some foam, which I don't think we're gonna be using. I think the feet are in there too. And then we have a plate. Interesting plate. I don't exactly know what this is for, but is that part of the board? Interesting. Interesting plate. Again, not too going, not going too crazy with flex cuts or anything like that. It does look, and I'm not sure if this is intentional, but it does look that if you really want it to, which I don't recommend on the hot swap PCB, again, kind of taking a note from, believe it or not, what Wilba I think did with the salvation. Looks like you can actually just clip out the center alphas here. Oh, that separates things. Ah. So it looks like you can just kind of clip those out which is kind of fun. Do you, should we do knobs with this or not? Nah? Actually, did they send me knobs with this? Hold on one second, guys. They did, should we do knobs? That means I need to just quickly take out some of these. Knob it up. We're knobbing it up. Let me turn on the soldering iron. You have to remove the hot swap sockets. Oh, do I? I do. All right, I'll get rid of them. You know what's weird about this too? I'm confused by this. This has a blocker here, but the keyboard doesn't. Am I supposed to put something there? Or am I supposed to chop that open or something? The PBD block, a third knob, is, is it this thing? So where exactly do you attach this to? No, that goes below the knobs. Oh yeah, this would go here, right? Did they send you a win keyless? They sent you a win keyless board? Yeah, they, I think they did. Yeah, they might have sent me the wrong plate, but it is just FR4, so we could just clip it open. What's with you and plate mods recently? It's been mostly just the prototypes. Thank God it's been mostly just prototypes. And thank goodness we're also fucking noticing these problems. Because I, if, if these kind of went like unchecked, uh, and this is why I also like live streams, by the way, guys, because you guys see all the stuff that happens. You know what I mean? Because if this was a video and like someone wanted to, I'm not saying people do this, but someone wanted to like cover up the fact that something was messed up, they could just edit that part out. You know what I mean? That's, 
the easy thing to do. Yeah, the plate shifting, uh, they saw on the video, so they're well aware of it now. I think they asked me like what, what was shifting and I just told them the plate, but I'm gonna be having a further discussion with them about the Zoom 75 plate. Surely this segment will be edited out aware. Uh, on the VOD hyperlapse, I don't know, Manoli might leave it in. Maybe Manoli will make some weird joke about it, but I don't think Manoli will. I feel like this is also, I need, I think I need to clip this entire section over here, by the way, because I feel like this is the, also the wrong area for this too. Okay, this is gonna be a bit awkward, by the way, because we're missing this whole piece of the plate here. I'm not about to file it down. I'll just cut it all off entirely. So we have to. And I did that because this one here is also misaligned. It was giving me basically, there's two switches here. Uh, it was telling me I had to, the plate was aligned, so I had to use this one here, which would have made it wrong too. Plate this time. The gasket tab holding on for dear life. Yes, the gas tab, the gas tab should be fine. It's a little crooked now because I had to cut into this, but it's kind of ugly, but whatever, it works. I wish I knew about this before installing everything, but this is what it is. I don't get how I'm getting so unlucky with plates these days. All right, let's move this to the side and let's open up our case now. Interesting. Do I have to unscrew all of these? There's a lot of screws on this. I kind of like that though. It's a different vibe. Okay, these long ones go on the back. We gotta remember that. Bro, there's so many screws on this. It's a pretty board. Screw this guy too. It's like a puzzle. Interesting. So there's a piece of aluminum here too. That actually, it kind of reminds me of like a veneer that you put on like a desk to cover the seam or like the cardboard pieces. And then there's another eight screws here. I mean, it kind of makes sense with this design, but I mean, at least, you know what? At least it's the same bit. I don't mind it though. This is not like overly difficult though. Tedious, not overly difficult. Maybe takes some points away from like an ease of build process, but definitely not a difficult project. All right, so now we should be able to open this up. And there we go. I'm a little worried. Um, these gaskets are so tiny. I think I would have personally preferred some sort of gasket sock style mounting system for this. The gaskets are really small, but uh, there's a lot of them too that we need to apply. So we're gonna be here a little while. Don't love this part of this board. Is the top metal or plastic? Um, the top is metal, so aluminum. Yeah, I mean, like, I don't want to put the gaskets, I have a feeling people are probably gonna ask this, but I don't want to put the gaskets on the plate because for alignment purposes, it's just easier to put it inside the case. Yeah, okay, I don't like these gaskets. Super tedious to put these guys in. It's weird because it's in such a deep kind of like well that it makes it kind of a little bit awkward to stick in. So again, going that gasket sock route, I feel like would have been a lot better for like a build experience. And let's set this guy down. Perfect. Okay. Sitting in there nice. Again, our bottom row might be a little weird, guys. I apologize for the scuff on the plate there, but not really much I can personally do about that. 
that's a we have to take it for what it is type thing prototype content be like that sometimes you know another thing too um will these screws work i don't think i was given any extra set of screws so if i can oops there's a lot of gaskets falling out if i can get this to work here we'll screw this in Alex Otto's content before bed less school. <laughs> Let's go, dude. Thank you, man. I appreciate you. And I guess we'll just at the same breath put this piece on. Thank you so much, Jung. I appreciate you. This kind of slides on like that. Interesting. I got a little, little weird. But we'll, we'll manage. And this we'll put on last, I suppose. All right. Let me slowly assemble this all, guys. These long ones go on the top. Thank you, Zach, appreciate you, man. Appreciate the sub. Again, I love the finish of this like, acrylic piece, whatever this is. It feels nice. It feels very like premium. Thank you for the 100, it's, is it polycarbonate? It's it PC. My mistake there. Original stance has the info we need. Definitely does not feel like polycarb. Definitely some pain points though, from a building standpoint. It's not overly complex, which is nice. Like I feel like I wasn't struggling too hard figuring where things go, like screw wise and all that. Uh, kind of fun. I will say though, I don't love the gasket system. I don't know if that's a change that can be easily implemented, but I think just from a criticism standpoint, gasket system could use a little bit of work. It's a little frustrating putting those things in, but otherwise, like I don't mind all this assembly to it. I think this is actually kind of fun. So I'm here for it. Interesting. Okay, ignore the scuff piece of the plate. I like all the texture going on over here. Even this little blocker thing is kind of neat. Were we supposed to put a full shift over here, guys? Luckily it's hot swap, so this is not like a terrible thing, but for some reason I thought this was a short shift. Hello? Oh God. No stab, don't use the key. Honestly, it doesn't really that ma matter that much. I don't know if this particular side will even work as it is right now, simply because I think this is still the wrong layout. Whatever, they sent this the, uh, the wrong plate. But when we get there, we'll get there. We'll see. Again, not too sure. Is there a size shift? Like what shift do we use for this? I can already say, uh, I don't like having that there, but I also don't feel like trimming this anymore. It's fine, just ignore it. They sent us the wrong plate, guys. It's fine. We'll just ignore it, whatever. Not a bad looking keyboard. I am gonna say though, I think we definitely have to put some sort of, I don't know if there's, Maybe a riser on this side would be perfect. But uh, I also don't think we really need that support for the sh from the stab over there, really don't. You know, it's not that bad. That whole like bottoming out, you don't really notice it when you're actually just typing normally. Only when you put a lot of pressure, but I still don't think that's a, a great thing to have. I do think that should be looked at a little bit. Ignore it, ignore it. What do you guys think? Does it look nice? God, that's sexy. It's a nice looking keyboard. The right side of the board's pretty. So a few things that I've already noticed about this. It's a very pretty side over here. So again, we'll go over the things that didn't work. We're gonna ignore the plate because I feel like that was just a mistake on their part. And I hope that doesn't happen for shipping, uh, but we'll still mention it. The plate, wrong plate they sent us. It's fine, whatever. Um, okay. Assembly wasn't too bad. I think the gasket system had to be the most annoying thing. 
So that was probably the only thing that I feel like could have been improved on. Just that. Uh, assembly of the board though is shockingly not that bad. It's just a lot of pieces. So still not that bad though. I'll, I'll give it that. It's, it wasn't awful. It wasn't an awful experience. The knob crevices, I don't mind the knobs. The knobs are kind of cool. You don't have to use knobs. You can use switches if you guys so please. Uh, but it's a pretty, it's a pretty keyboard. Like it's definitely different. I appreciate it for being different. I am noticing this and I'm just gonna point this out. Uh, yeah, a lot of pieces. Uh, again, I don't know what's causing this to, I feel like this may be just all the sheer weight of having the encoders and this like copper or whatever piece this is, but you can kind of hear it bottom out over here, which I don't know if it's gonna short the keyboard by the way. But let's see what this sounds like. We're using KTT Roses. This is the uh, new Retro 66. Little HJ test for you guys. Actually, let's plug it in. I wanna see if it shorts. All right. Little HJ test. Let me open a notepad so I don't. It's not bad. It's kind of relaxing. Okay, this space bar is suffering. You know what it is though, Varja? I can already tell you what the space bar is doing. The space bar is suffering from having the mounting point right underneath the space bar. I guarantee you, if we were to open this up, yeah, I think it does. Once we get a correct plate, if they send me one, if we were to open this up and trim that piece, the FR4, and just take out the mounting point underneath, can you test if it's shorting first? Yeah, let's test that. It's not shorting when you do it, so that's nice. But it is quite a loud, sound there. I'm gonna message the studio to ask them to maybe send me a better plate. I don't know if we can get one before the group buy ends, but I think it'll be fun to still build one with the correct plate on it. Other than that, it sounds pretty good. It has a lot of flex to it. Take care everyone, love you guys. Bye-bye and peace out everyone. Bye, love you.